My very first computer was really slow and really beige, even by 1998 standards. And look at where we are now. I'm running a more or less full PC experience on a smartphone I pulled out of my pocket. This is Samsung's DeX system that works with the Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus, and it does turn this smartphone into a full-blown PC in a lot of ways. The question now isn't, is this possible? Because it clearly is. The question is, should anyone bother? And I think for a lot of people, the answer is gonna be no. As cool as this is, and as fluidly as it does work from time to time, there's a lot about this that just doesn't make sense for most of you out there watching. Before we go any further, we have to talk about the DeX dock itself. Just look at it. It's basically a tiny UFO with a top that slides open to reveal a spot for your S8 or S8 Plus. I'm actually pretty down with this design though. It's not like you're gonna be paying attention to it most of the time anyway. On the back, you'll find just about all the ports you'll need. There are two full-size USB ports, an ethernet jack for wired internet, and an HDMI connector for connecting monitors. One thing you won't find, however, is a classic headphone jack, even though both versions of the S8 have them. This is honestly a little annoying. By default, the docked phone single speaker does the heavy lifting where audio is concerned, and it's just not great. Anyway, for the past week, I've been using a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse, and I'd recommend the same if you've got them laying around. I mean, who doesn't like a clean desk? Once that's all done, just pop the S8 or S8 Plus into the dock and you're ready to go. And you know what? There's some serious power locked inside these phones and over a week of testing, it was enough to keep me surprisingly productive, most of the time, anyway. You're plopped into a very familiar Windows-like desktop environment and you can run up to 30 apps at the same time. That's kind of a lot. My daily routine never really saw me using more than 15 or 20. And while I get low memory warnings fairly regularly, the system tended to run very smoothly unless I was specifically trying to gum it up. Performance was snappy, latency was low. I have to give Samsung some props. When DeX works, it works really well. Gamers obviously need not apply, but if you spend most of your day within the confines of a web browser, DeX just might work out for you. Just remember it's not perfect. Samsung's own web browser defaults to showing you desktop versions of sites, but you're out of luck if you want to use Chrome because it just gives you blown up versions of mobile sites. There were also times when the interface just locked up, forcing me to close random apps in hopes of fixing the problem. Apps that ran rock solid on the phone seemed more prone to force closing on Dex 2, which may or may not be a side effect of switching between screen setups. And speaking of apps, you'll have to wrap your head around the different ways they work on Dex. Really, my biggest frustration is how DeX handles apps. If you're watching this when we publish it, it's still fairly close to launch and there are only about 16 apps available that have been DeX optimized. That is to say, they're fully resizable and work well on a bigger screen. Some apps can be moved and sort of manipulated to work on this bigger screen as well, but a lot just won't. They run as small Android style apps that sort of clutter up your screen, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It just, there is a lack of unity that kind of feels kludgy and it isn't for everybody. I should also point out that some apps just refuse to work. You obviously can't, for example, use Samsung Pay because it's stuck in a dock and Spotify, for whatever reason, just refuses to work at all. But there are ways around it. You can, for example, access a Windows 10 virtual machine in Amazon Workspaces, download and install Spotify and listen to it that way. Should anyone have to do this? No, and it speaks to how silly Dex is sometimes but there is flexibility there if you really, really want it. None of these issues are ideal, but I don't know that I'd call them deal breakers either. Devising a way for smartphone apps to run and run well in a desktop environment is no joke, and Samsung generally did a really good job. We've seen Motorola try with the Atrix, and we've seen Microsoft try with Continuum, and we've seen countless startups give it a go too. After all that, I think it's safe to say Samsung's attempt at blurring the line between smartphones and PCs is the best that I've ever seen. That said, I'm not convinced that every S8 owner needs to go out and buy this thing. As good as it is, there's a solid chance that you have regular access to a computer that's A, more flexible, and B, just runs faster anyway. And of course, DeX only really works if you already have all the parts needed to make it work or are willing to go out and buy a bunch of extras. If you fall into that former category, great. Go nuts, you'll probably have a really fun time. For everyone else though, DeX remains an impressive technical achievement that just doesn't really make sense for your life. <laughs>